Welcome to the SCORE offices. We're here in uh, Toronto with Matt Stoney, Joey Chestnut, Miki Sudo. They're in Toronto for what I didn't realize is the second biggest eating contest in the world, the Smokes Poutinery World Poutine Eating Championship. So first of all, all this poutine in front of us. I was reading that last year's winner ate 20 pounds of poutine in 10 minutes. So just visually, explain to us how this gets in there because it doesn't really seem to make sense when you look at it. It uh, it's one way or another, it gets in there. We shovel it in, 10 minutes of play time, so we just find a rhythm and keep dancing the food down. And 20 pounds actually isn't even the world record. Yeah, 25. Yeah, we've both done more than that. Yeah, me and Matt so, have both yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, the winner last year was kind of slack. Yeah, was last year me and Matt couldn't make it to the contest. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's why the guy won. Yeah, wasn't. he got lucky. So you guys are coming for the crown this well, we're year? Gonna, we're going to dominate this year. So what uh, what's a target for you then, if, if 20 wasn't the world record? You know, record? It, it, I'm not necessarily going for a record. If, if the poutine conditions are right, the record will get broken. But I'm just, I want to find that rhythm and hopefully win, because it, Matt will be pushing me hard. Okay, so what what's a good poutine condition? What's uh? Not um, freezing cold. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes it's pretty cold out there. If the, the gravy is warm and the fries are still warm and everything, then it, it goes on pretty fast. All yeah. right, so like the the I guess the way the food is made or the way it's prepared does have a, an Absolutely. influence. Absolutely, if, if the food tastes good, it, it's uh, easier to eat a lot of it. Like anything, if your mom's cooking cooking is if you're used to it and it tastes good, you're gonna it's gonna go down so easy and fast. The same with the uh, smoked poutine. It tastes it, when it's good, it's good, and it's like. It's like heaven. I okay, love it. so so you guys can actually enjoy the food. Like if something tastes good, even though you're kind of plowing it down, like in ten minutes, you can you can still taste whether something tastes good or not. It's not. Oh like, yeah. yeah, yeah. If there's a flavor in there I don't like, you, you'll see us make or see me making funny faces like a minute in. Then I have to drink more water and do whatever it takes to get it down. But if it, if it's uh, agreeing with my body, my body's accepting it. It's. Uh, you make funny faces. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not pretty when I eat. <laughs> I'm not pretty either way, but... <laughs> we've, all seen, we've all seen the video, but, but, it, it, but it goes down a lot easier when, when you like it. It's like like, any, like 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 a job you like to do at work. Right. It, it's it's a lot easier to do. It's not work when you, when you, when you love it. Well, obviously, the, the average human can't do what you guys do, so there's got to be, you know, some pretty vigorous training uh, that goes into it. So how exactly, you know, people know how most athletes train, right? You Basketball players do it's, certain things. But what do competitive eaters do? How do you train your mouth, your stomach, your body to it's intake not, all this it's food. It's not that different. It's slow, it's, it's very similar to a marathon. A marathon runner doesn't just run 26 miles, they slowly build up to it. I'm, I don't just eat 74 hot dogs. I had to take months and practices and practice and recover and build the tolerance. It's a, a lot of it's just building a tolerance and making those muscles get used to stretching and accepting and, and knowing and just convincing yourself it's okay. So it's just basically like you eat a lot and gradually eat more and more and then eventually your body can just take it? Like how? I mean, there's more to it, but yeah, it's just pretty much building the muscles that you need to use and building the mentality. A lot of it's mental. If you can't fathom eating 20 pounds or never eat 20 pounds, so yeah, it's just a mixture of both. I was also reading, Joey, you mentioned about how you run. And, and that helps with your breathing and the, and I've the been running. I've been taking a little bit of time but, off But running, you mentioned but, uh, how running and running breathing actually... Running, yeah, running helps so much because when I'm, when I'm faster and I'm, I can control my breathing during eating contests, I don't, I'm not winded. Then I can, uh, don't have to breathe through my mouth. And, and once you start breathing through your, through your mouth, then you're slowing down. You're not, you're not eating. You have, to, you have to stop pretty much. I, I guess a question I think a lot of people would have is, at what point in your life do you, whether it's see competitive eating on TV, whatever it is that you say, you know what, I can do that and I want to do that. Like what kind of, what's that moment? Like how does that come about? When, when did you decide, Mickey? I didn't decide, I, just, I really just fell into it. Um, I was a broke college kid and I found out that there was a challenge at a Vietnamese restaurant offering this progressive jackpot that was up to $1,500 if you could eat 12 pounds of noodle soup. and. Uh, Went in without practice or preparation, did that, and it kind of snowballed from there, and here I am. So did you? You did it. You ate twelve yeah, pounds of noodle soup with no preparation, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They put me up on a billboard, and after that, um, all my friends started sending me links to different challenges, and uh, collected all the money in Vegas to be one outside exceedance, and uh, yeah. Now here I am, standing next to Joey Chestnut and Matt Stoney, eating poutine tomorrow. Okay, but how do you get to this level? Like, you know, is there, do you start off entering like local competitions and then it kind of builds and builds, or can anyone just join a pro competition if they wanted to? Uh, every con every pro contest, there's a couple spots uh, left open for locals. So there, there will be some locals still competing tomorrow. But uh, I, I started in a local contest, local professional contest, and then I did well and I, they let me into another one and I made some money and I, I pretty much became addicted to it. and. Uh, it's just like anything. They just slowly work your way up through the ranks. What about you, Matt? Same thing, or? Yeah, I mean, 
I started, I probably did a year of just like amateur stuff. Okay. And then when I started competing guys with Joey, you know, just the, the, the drive to get better just naturally comes. So, you know, I don't want to get smoked by him every time. Yeah, so I mean, it took a couple years to beat him. It really is competitive eating. It, it's not pretty eating. It's not eating for enjoyment. It's, it, it's competitive. When you watch us, we're, we're, we're there pushing ourselves really, really hard. We're not there to make friends. We're not, we're there, we're, we're there just to eat as, more than the guy next to us, no matter how bad it hurts. or. Even if it hurts or it's uncomfortable, we, we love to eat, but we're willing to do make it, yeah, we're willing to go through pain in order to win. You know, if you're looking at basketball, other athletes say, oh, look at LeBron, and they'll try to pick apart things he does or, like, watch him on film. In competitive eating, can you watch another guy? Like, can you guys watch Joey as the number one guy and say, okay, like, he's doing this thing that I want to pick up or I could do this different? Or with competitive eating, is it just a matter of the human body does what it does? I mean... I could probably speak to this better because you've been doing it for so long. But like, I watched a bunch of Joey's tapes and, and just a lot of the guys when I was rising to the top and everything. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, you, you watch other people's strategies, you take from it what you can, but then you also got to develop your own thing. If you just, if it's just a bandwagoner, you'll just be a bandwagoner. So um, I eat way differently than Joey, but I picked up a lot of my techniques from Joey, Berletti, a lot of the old guys. So. Yeah, we. Uh, Matt's just a naturally super fast eater, and so and I, I'm a little bit slower, but I have, I have a better capacity. So we, we, we attack the food a little bit differently. Uh, I mean, he, she's pretty fast, she, and she has an awesome capacity for a woman, but <laughs> or, or a man. Even. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we, we all attack the food a little bit differently. But we we can we can uh, yeah we can see when somebody's technique's a little bit faster than ours. And I'll, I'll change my technique if I see Matt's drinking more liquid, and it's it's actually helping him get it down. I'll, I'll, I'll end up drinking more liquid so it settles faster. I think we also, I definitely have my strengths and my weaknesses. I'm a lot better at foods where I can just bite and swallow things whole as opposed to having to chew and, and all that. So, poutines could be a little bit difficult. So, <laughs> well, okay, so what are some of the challenges then of a, of a poutine compared to, you know, a hot dog or a hamburger or other kind of fast food things? What, what's unique about trying to speed eat a poutine? Well, poutine, it's, it's a... It's a purely capacity contest. It's fast, yeah. and it's a little bit messy. So sometimes when things are messy, it becomes a little bit gross. You get food in your nose, you get food in your face. So so it, that, that that makes it a little bit harder. But uh, but it's a capacity contest. So if the if the food's warm, and then then the person with less capacity is in trouble. They they they're, they're going to be they're going to be in pain about minute six. Me, I'm going to be in pain rather about minute nine. I, I have a really good capacity and. It's uh, and, and but Matt, he, he's gonna be probably ahead of me in the beginning of the contest because he's fast. So he'll swallow fast in the beginning of the contest, and I'll, I'll have to try to catch him towards the end with my capacity. Mickey, you know, Joey had, had mentioned about how you know you eat fast for a woman, and but really, if you look at the world rankings, you're the number one ranked woman in the world. You're number seven overall. What is it like being a woman in what seems to be a pretty male-dominated area? Um, you know, for me, I really don't see the difference. I, I guess I've just gotten used to. I mean, I, I started competing alongside guys. And not gonna lie, I beat Joey five times in my first year. She did. I did. I mean, so it's happened. I mean, I can't win them all. The, the competition has definitely gotten tougher over the last few years. You've got new people coming in really strong, people taking training extremely seriously. So I can't really coast anymore. Um, but you know, at one point I was ranked fourth. Now I'm seventh, still the top female, and uh, you know, five time women's Nathan's champion. So you know, I've got a lot of accomplishments under my belt and a lot of belts to show that, so, you know, I can't complain. The competitions in general, is it pretty much open to any, like, any age, any gender, like, any... I think so. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I think as long as they're... Uh, over 18. Over 18. Or over 21 if it's in a casino. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's open to anyway. It, it's a pretty... Uh, the, only, the only contest where we separate men and women is uh, Nathan's, but other than that, everybody's competing. There's, alongside each other. So are there any, because uh, I mean, there's obviously dangers to the actual thing. You know, I, myself, I can't competitive eat today because I was told by Major League Eating that you need an EMT on site if you're going to speedy. So what are some of the dangers both, I guess, in the moment, but also well, are there any long term? Like you mentioned the guy's still doing it at 80. Are there any health risks long term if you're kind of doing this? Long term, I mean, for me, I, I, I can tell that I gain weight. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a battle for me because I do love to eat. Uh, there's no way around it. If if I eat 20 pounds of poutine, it's gonna stay on me. It, even three days of of eating just lettuce the, afterwards, it's still gonna there's still gonna be some weight on me uh, five days later. And if I have another contest, I, I'm gonna end up putting on a little bit more weight. So during the summer, I'm gonna put on 30 pounds, even if I'm trying to eat healthy in between the contests. So uh, when I was younger, I could lose that weight really quickly during the winter. 
now it's it's harder and harder. Uh, so, so I, I think probably I've, this year I tried to compete in less contests than, than previous years, and I didn't put on quite as much weight as I, as I had. But uh, it, it, the putting for me, that's the biggest battle. Uh, for I don't know what for Matt because he he's he has that one of those crazy genetics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things you could do that, you know, will, you know, affect you diversely if you don't balance it out. It's just balance, you know. It's like we know that we're eating so much food. We know we got to balance it out. We know if we want to compete well in the next contest, you got to be healthy. And um, yeah, I mean, short-term side effects. You know, there's obviously like choking and stuff. You got to be careful. You know, like what we do up on stage isn't the most. Um, you know, the safest thing in the world. But, you know, we've trained our bodies, and that's what makes it, um, that's why no incidents really happen, so. Has anything ever happened, like, at a, a major event? You guys ever seen anything crazy? Or like Nothing really crazy. I, I, I remember my first contest. It was a lobster eating contest. And lobster the, eating? Lobster. And the guy next to me, his fruit, he, he shoved, shoved the tail in his mouth, and he started choking. It was the only time in, like, 13 years of competitive eating I've seen him, the EMT give the Heilman maneuver, and this guy hucked out the uh, lobster tail. But, uh... Other than that, I, I, it, it's pretty amazing that, that that was the only incident I've ever seen. No, oh, I've seen a couple of people get heat stroke, and oh, okay. it, but that's normal for any sport. Right. And, and, yeah. and so, so it's because sometimes we're in a hot festival during the summer, so it, that, that's normal. Um, musicians get heat stroke. Right. But uh, it, it's mostly I think the biggest thing for competitive eaters, we, we just have to pay it, pay attention to our body and really get become in, in tune with it. Know when we're full, know when we're not, and know that. Uh, we make, we're making our body work for us. What are the couple of days leading into a competition like? like? I know today, for example, you guys aren't eating anything here. Is it like a fast for a couple of days? Today, and yeah, so I stopped eating solid food yesterday. Today is all day fast, uh, just lots of liquid. I want to go in nice and empty for almost pretty much almost a cleanse going into it uh, because I, I, I want to make sure it's easy to digest the food. And uh, yeah, it just so I, I can have, have a reason to push myself that hard. I guess the uncomfortable question of competitive eating is what happens after, after an event. Because this, you guys are putting... Oh, you want pictures or what? I mean, I'm, we don't need visuals, Jeez. but try to give us an idea of what the human body goes through after this goes in there. Mickey, you want to tell him? That sounds like a joke question. To I me. think Mickey wants to show him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, well, part of it is we go into it so empty, uh, and it makes it easier to digest the food. Okay. And so it's... It's gonna digest, and uh, you know, it, for about four hours later, I'm, I'm, my first thing is I'm, I'm just tired, and I'm, then I'm thirsty, and so uh, then I'm going to sleep, and then I'm waking up with nature calls, okay. and uh, different rounds. But nature's only calling one way; it's not coming both Very ways. Rarely, so okay. I only get sick if there's something wrong. Oh, okay. Uh, so if, if the food is prepared really, really poor, poorly, like a casino sometimes does that. No offense, but casinos, but uh, not the highest the, the poutine, the smoked poutine, it, it's it's a, such a comfort food that the gravy and gravy and potatoes digest so quickly, and uh, I'll, I'll be waking up four hours after. <laughs> I, I know that. I think a lot of people when they think of competitive eating, they do think of fast foods, right? So whether it's hot dogs, poutine, burgers, wings. But I was reading, for example, like deep fried asparagus is yeah. a popular. I was reading Miki, for example, you ate like almost eight pounds of deep fried asparagus in ten minutes or something. Or yeah, I've, so. And I've also done kimchi. We have a corn eating contest on the circuit. Shrimp cocktail. Shrimp. Co so basically, is is anything that's edible applicable to a speed eating contest, or are there certain things or like, like. You mentioned, you know, it shouldn't be too cold. Can you eat ice cream in a speed eating contest? Ice cream. Oh, oh wow, okay, so there you go. What, how much? <laughs> it was uh, just over two gallons in, I think it was a six or eight That's minute, a six minute, six minute contest. contest. That was tough. And I also don't recommend running about a mile to your car immediately after oh, eating um, over two gallons of ice cream. But so pretty much anything that is edible is applicable to a speed well, it, it, it's, uh, it's like, uh, Pretty much anything. There's usually a sponsor, or there's a fe there has to be a reason to do it. Right. <laughs> um, otherwise, yeah. But it, it somebody who wants to get it. Now we did a kale eating contest. Okay. So we, we there's there's a big variety. We have, we do love to eat, so it's uh, not too hard. As long as it's normal food, I'll do it. Do you guys need like if it's a, a food maybe you've never speed ate before? Do you need maybe a little bit of training time? Like if you've never say uh, you know done asparagus before, and then all of a sudden oh you got to eat eight pounds of asparagus in ten minutes? Do you have to have tried it before? Or can you just go into it willy nilly, being like, all right, I'll try this? Yeah, there's been a few uh, regional foods. That's that's a big one. Some regional festivals and stuff that promote like the local food. Or flown out early just to get my hands on the food a bit early, and um, it helps because you need to be ready for it. But yeah, I've I've tried all, all types of food all over the place. I heard somebody cooked up 
brains yeah. in oh, preparation yeah, yeah. for a brain yeah. taco eating contest. Brain well, taco? I, I, yeah, so me and Matt were doing this brain taco eating contest. Brain taco as in like brain inside yeah, Like cow of brain tacos, like that's the meat. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I didn't want to lose, so I, I made them at home. And it ended up being, just barely beating Matt. Half a taco. <laughs> what, what was the taste like? It was. It wasn't bad. It got rough later on. It though. looked the like brains, got, though. Yeah, it, it, it had brains. a little bit of a metallic taste, and uh, I was just watching Matt. I, I, either I was eating with my eyes closed, or I was watching Matt just make sure I was one ahead of him. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds rough. I don't, Mickey. I saw a video too where you chug like a two liter. I don't know if it was some sort of cola or soda or pop, but to the like the average person just can't do that from a pain. You know, like the the way pain is when pop goes down. So like, have you guys desensitized? No, it, it, so <laughs> the average the average person who can't chug two liters of pop is a sissy. That's what Joey Chestnut said. So, well, but that was when I really first started out, and it was just kind of to test my capacity because I, I didn't want to fill up on water or food or anything like that. So I just figured a carbonated beverage would be mostly air, and uh, yeah, yeah. So checking a two-liter soda without releasing any of the carbonation is pretty tricky. So, anyway. But like, have you guys like desensitized almost in a way, even to be able to do that? Because like I was saying, the average person. Yeah, now, now it's easy. When right. I first started out, it was. It was I don't know. Of... We, we, I, I still can have a normal meal and feel satisfied. It's not. It, it, it's the same way as like a runner can run without having or having to always run yeah. a thousand or a ridiculous amount. Uh, they can exercise without having being a crazy person. Right. Uh, we, we can eat without being. Uh, eating like an animal all the time. Right. But when, even when you guys say go, you know, like casually go one night to a restaurant, sit down and have dinner, can you eat at a normal pace? I know you're not eating at this pace, but generally, are you still faster than the average person or can you just Ugh. eat and enjoy like a nice meal at an average pace? Gone, it disappeared pretty quick. Yeah. They don't pay attention to it, but. Yeah, it, if, uh, if, if the conversation is any good, isn't very good, then uh, <laughs> I'll just eat a little bit faster. But. Uh, yeah, maybe if we're talking, I, I can eat a normal meal with everybody and, and pace myself pretty easily with everybody else. But if, if I'm had a couple of drinks in, I usually get carried away. But uh, yeah, if I'm at a baseball game, hot dogs just disappear. <laughs> so how many? Okay, so how many are you crushing at a baseball game? You're not doing 80 at a game. No, I like, won't 80, <laughs> but it, usually it'll be. I'm averaging one an inning. <laughs> wow. Okay. So nine on an yeah, average. That'd, yeah, that'd be that'd be easy. Yeah. Okay, let's talk nicknames. Megatoad. How did this come about? How did you get that? Uh, it was a reference to like a Mario Brothers character way back in the day when I started. Everybody had nicknames, and I was just like, I just gotta think of a nickname for me. So I just stuck with that for whatever reason. <laughs> it, it just seemed like a silly thing to do. Jaws. Sonia Thomas gave it to me. Nice. You know, like the Black Widow. She's uh, she was the original female competitive eater. No offense. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, no, she she was awesome. She she said I attacked food like a like a goofy big goofy shark. Nice. So. <laughs> All right, before, before we finish here, I guess the last thing is, I'm hoping you guys can, uh, again, I can't speed eat because there's no EMT on site, but I'm hoping you guys can kind of walk me through how you do this hot dog thing in the water. So we've got, oh, we've got some boiled hot dogs here. Boiled hot dogs? Yeah, I believe they're boiled. That okay, so, so that's cool. Do you, guys, do you guys barbecue them when you, when you eat them? No, they're not barbecue. No, they're flat top grilled, like griddle. Flat, okay. Which is... Well, we've got boiled ones. God, they're so bad. <laughs> so is it just the... law. First of all, why, why would you be getting water? All right, you're not going to dip the whole thing in water. Okay, take the hot dog out. <laughs> oh, you take the hot dog out? Take the hot dog out. Okay. And some, most people, if you're only just doing one, you split it in half. You split it off in half in one hand. Only one. doing one, so usually you're doing more. Yeah, usually I'm doing two. All right, so split in half. So with one hand, you're grabbing two of them. Do that one. And then you're going to, you're putting it in your mouth, you're going to do it sideways. You're, you're trying to, you're trying to, but keep it up against it. You're going to keep chewing. And work it, work it out, everything in your mouth to the back of your throat. And while you're doing that, you dunk the bun. So you eat the bun separate. You want you, so you're, you're dunking the bun. How deep am I going? Get that, oh, get that thing wet. <laughs> get that bun wet. Mm. Wet oh, buns oh. go down, and don't don't oh. leave any debris. It falls. So you, now that now that's a sip of water that looks like a bun. <laughs> so swallow that meat. Yeah, don't that, no, you gotta go I'm faster. That tastes exactly how you imagine a wet bun to taste. Yeah, so the, the, for that contest, it, the wet bun was the hardest thing to get over. So I, I don't, it's no longer a bun to me. It, it's a sip of water that looks like a bun. <laughs> All right. I'm going to tap out at half a hot dog. Jeez. Uh, full hot dog and half a bun. You definitely can't do what you guys do. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in.